Let's look at three geofencing scenarios, static, dynamic, and peer-to-peer. -peer. A static geofence may take the dynamic movements of a mobile user and correlate that to a static place, for example. That correlation can trigger a process or an action when a user approaches that place of interest or when they depart that place of interest. Another static type of geofence would take, again, the dynamic movements of a mobile user and trigger a process or an action when a user enters a zone, a geographic zone, or when they exit a geographic zone. These processes and actions can include delivering an email or a text message or kicking off an API call to a third-party service in the cloud to mix into the larger application. A dynamic geofence takes the dynamic movements of a mobile user and correlates them with other feeds of dynamic data, such as traffic in this example. And a user, of course, avoids that, and we can measure physical and behavioral responses to traffic or 50% off offers at a store offering a product that the user may be interested in. The last type of geofence, a peer-to-peer -peer geofence, takes the dynamic movements of two or more mobile users to trigger processes and actions when those two users approach each other or when those two users separate. 